One Piece is the most successful manga of all time. You can argue all you want about which series may have the best quality, is the most culturally influential, or how iconic they may be. But when it comes down to sales and popularity, One Piece is by far the leader of the pack. It surpassed all other manga, old and new. And by the time it finishes, it'll probably be the highest selling comic, period. But why? What makes this series so much more successful than others? How did it get and hold such a huge fan base? What does Eiichiro Oda do to make One Piece One Piece? Let's break it down. A lot of the time when you ask people what makes One Piece great, they'll usually respond with world building or characters or emotional moments, and that's all true. But one of the more underrated parts of One Piece is the technical aspect of it. In other words, how Oda writes the series. The way he creates, builds, and concludes all of the arcs and sagas while keeping the reader engaged is really something that deserves more credit. One Piece has over 1,000 chapters. Insane. What's even more insane is that there are people who have been reading the series for 15, 20, even 25 years. There's probably someone out there who watched One Piece as a kid and is now watching with their kid who is the same age as them when they started. Which is weird considering that usually manga series, especially the more modern ones, try to conclude their plots as quickly as possible out of fear of losing their audience's interest which leads to lower sales which leads to the series getting cancelled early. This has led to arcs getting shorter and shorter and shorter so they can just get to the final battle. But One Piece does the exact opposite. Instead of keeping its arc short to keep the audience engaged, which honestly results in a lot less emotional depth, One Piece actually extends its story with a ton of setup to add more depth and complexity. A great example is how Oda introduced Vivi and Baroque Works, a major character and the main villains of the first significant saga of One Piece, Alabasta. In chapter 103, Vivi first appears as some Team Rocket type villain, but we also learn that she's part of some type of organization. Then in chapter 107, we learn that the organization's actually called Baroque Works and is full of bounty hunters. Then in chapter 110, we learn she's actually a princess acting as a spy. Finally in chapter 113, we learn that Baroque Works is an organization headed by Crocodile, a pirate warlord who has sabotaged and is trying to take over the kingdom of Alabasta. Oda took over 10 chapters to properly introduce Vivi and her conflict after her first appearance when he could have just done it in one by introducing her as a runaway princess. At first sight, it seems like Oda just used mystery to string along his audience, but it wasn't for no reason. In the span of those 10 chapters, Oda 1 showed the desperation and will of Vivi. We see firsthand how Vivi was willing to put herself in harm's way by infiltrating the enemy's organization, so we have a greater appreciation for her character and understanding of how dire her situation is. Two, he introduces us to the main theme of Alabasta, which is friendship. Throughout Alabasta, and especially its ending, we see how important friendship is. So having Vivi's friends sacrifice themselves for her at the start of the saga is a great setup and gives us a preview of what's to come. Three, he fleshed out Baroque works. Crocodile and Baroque works are meant to be on the opposite side of the spectrum when it comes to the theme of friendship. So instead of just telling us about how Baroque works is ruthless and don't care about each other, Oda showed us by having their agents assassinate their comrades, which is way more effective. And four, he just gave us more crew interactions. In this period, we see how Nami navigates the Grand Line, we also get Zoro versus the 100 bounty hunters, and Luffy's role as a leader is explored more, which is important for future arcs. And it isn't just Vivi's introduction that's a good example, it's the Alabasta saga as a whole. For example, right after this, the crew makes a stop at Little Garden, which seems like just an action-packed mini-story right before Alabasta, but it also establishes how important a man's pride and honor is in the world of One Piece, which makes the scene where Mr. Two defiles King Cobra's honor so much more impactful and helps us understand why the citizens of Alabasta would be so angry with him. Then the crew goes to Drum Kingdom, where Oda gives us one of the best flashbacks in the series and does some great world building and setup for future arcs. But he also shows us what happens to a kingdom full of people who have given up on it. Since Alabasta is going down the same path as Drum Kingdom, the tension around the situation 
Levy and the Straw Hats are in raises a lot. Most other authors would never spend over 50 chapters of setup for an arc, then spend another 25 chapters during the arc to set up the final battle. But Oda uses the same amount of setup and sometimes even more throughout the whole story for every single saga. He'll have small events that seem like cool little mini stories, but always have deeper messages and purposes that come up later on. It seems simple on the surface, but it's actually a lot harder to execute, which is the reason why you don't see it in other series. A lot of the time when other authors try to extend their story by adding depth, it feels like they're just dragging it, or sometimes it's just downright boring, and people end up dropping the series instead. But Oda is so good and efficient at storytelling that he's able to get so much done while keeping it enjoyable. And the reason he's efficient is the density in almost every single chapter. One of One Piece's strengths, but also one of its weaknesses, is just how much content is in a single chapter. A lot of people complain and say sometimes Oda goes overboard with how much he tries to fit in, and the chapter can sometimes look like a cluttered mess. But in my opinion, it's worth it. Almost every single chapter in this series addresses at least five different storylines. There's a reason why there's so many One Piece YouTubers with hundreds of thousands of subscribers that can upload at least two different videos a week, and they'll all give different opinions on the same chapter because there's just that much to talk about. I'll even give you an example. So I opened up a random number generator to give me a random One Piece chapter. I got chapter 802, then I broke down chapter 802. The first three pages revolve around the Straw Hat Pirates traveling with the Bartow Club, a fan favorite group from the last arc, and lets us know what they've been doing since they left Dressrosa, the last island they were on. Then the story shifts to the Marine Headquarters. Here we see Admiral Kizaru for the first time since the time skip over 200 chapters ago. We learn about how the former Whitebeard Pirates, a legendary pirate crew that disbanded after their legendary leader, Whitebeard, died, are being hunted down. Kizaru also interestingly mentions how the world government is starting to pay the price of working with pirates, which is something that had been building up for a while. We're also introduced to the seventh warlord of the sea, Weevil, for the first time and learn about how he's possibly Whitebeard's son, has a vendetta against Blackbeard, the killer of Whitebeard and one of the main antagonists of the show, and is being used by his mother to steal Whitebeard's treasure. Then we go back to the Straw Hat pirates who have just arrived at their new island, which is actually a gigantic elephant called Zo that has lived for thousands of years. We also learn that there's a species living on it called minks that apparently hate humans. Finally the chapter ends. Now I'm not gonna lie, I think I got kind of lucky with this draw, but off the top of my head I can think of eight different things to talk about in depth just from this chapter, and that's the benefit of the density of One Piece. While Oda makes sure that the story is cohesive and ties up well at the end, he also keeps in mind the weekly reader. Yeah, sure, sometimes the chapter can turn out a bit messy, but when it gives you so much to think about for the next week or two, it's definitely worth it. Just from this chapter, you could spend the whole next week thinking about what Weevil is going to contribute to the story, or what the elephant Zoe saw through those hundreds of years he lived, or what's coming next in the Straw Hats adventure. I could honestly go on and on, forget the next week that chapter could last you a month. But what's crazy is you'll forget about all of that when the next chapter comes around and gives you even more things to talk about. It gets to the point where the weekly experience as the arc is coming out is completely different from a new reader reading the arc in bulk, especially when a huge reveal happens or when an especially dense chapter drops. The One Piece community just goes crazy with different theories and opinions. And let me be clear, this kind of thing happens with every manga. When an important chapter drops, everyone gets excited and talks about it. But it's on another level with the One Piece community because the density of every single chapter allows this to happen almost every week. And this density doesn't just stop at the chapter level. Each arc, each saga, and each act is dense with storylines in One Piece. For example, the chapter I talked about is part of the Zo arc 
where in the span of only 22 chapters, Oda shows us what's happening in the outside world by setting up storylines with Weevil and the world government, and he also sets up a conflict between Blackbeard, the main antagonist, and the revolutionary army. He also shows us a whole new species with their own history and culture, then introduces us to another storyline with one of the Straw Hats getting abducted by one of the most powerful people in the series, not to mention teasing his own family history. We also learn more things about characters who have been traveling with the Straw Hats for over 200 chapters at this point. The Straw Hats get closer to their goal of getting the One Piece by finding one of the Road Pony Glyph, which we learn they have to collect all four to get to the final island, Raftel. The history of Wano is teased as well in this arc, with us learning about Odin who traveled with the Pirate King 20 years ago. Momonosuke uses the breath of all things, a mysterious power that we thought only Luffy and the last Pirate King had that we still know nothing about, not to mention the important characters revealed like Jack, Nekomomushi, Inuarashi, Pedro, Raizo, etc. And finally, themes like loyalty, family, and betrayal are introduced. All of this, on top of the plot of the actual island they were on, happens in the span of only 22 chapters. Yeah, there's a reason why the One Piece anime is the only one that can animate less than a chapter per episode. But this kind of fast-paced storytelling wasn't always there for One Piece. Instead, Oda slowly built up to this kind of storytelling through a three-act structure. A lot of the time when series start, they either take too long to build tension in the story, which can lead to the series getting cancelled, or they advance too much of the plot too fast, which can lead to later arcs getting a bit boring. But One Piece doesn't really have this problem. You see, One Piece can be split into a prologue and three parts. Paradise, the Yonko Act, and the Final Saga. The reason One Piece has gone on as long as it has is the changes it makes in between each of these acts. I'll be honest and say One Piece starts off slower than most series, but that's because it was given the opportunity to do that since it started in the 90s when manga was not as fast paced as it is now. And Oda took advantage of that in the prologue. He set the expectations for his audience low by not having that much tension. This gave him the opportunity to establish the basics of the world he'll be building in the future. Like the fact that they live in an ocean world and the different kind of pirates that exist and the different kind of marines that rein them in. He does it through a series of small arcs that have their flashes of greatness, but overall, outside of the final arc, they aren't very exciting to be frank. But Oda knew this, which is why he drastically changes his style of writing when he begins act one of the story. The first turning point is when the crew enters the Grand Line. In other words, when the series really begins. Oda abandons the standalone, short, surface level arcs he was writing before in favor of longer form arcs that come together and form sagas, and all of those sagas come together to form Act 1. The series gets so much better because of it. The Alabasta arc was so great because of all of the things Oda built in the previous arcs. Skypiea is what it is because of the idea of dreams and inherited will being explored in Jaya. The build up for Eni's lobby is so good that you could reasonably argue that Water 7 is the better arc. But more importantly, Act 1 is a perfect introduction to the world and the characters. And that is so important for later parts of the series where it's focused so much on the overarching plot that you don't get much time to really flesh out your main characters again. So most of Act 1 is just character driven. As the story goes on, the crew's personalities pop out more and more. We see their desires, their goals, their values, and their relationships. The character development in Act 1 is almost as good as a world building in my opinion. And speaking of world building, Oda also uses the opportunity to properly introduce the world to us. All the prologue revealed to us was that there were different factions on the seas. The pirates, the warlords, the navy, and the world government. In the introduction, we learn specifically how each of them work. Slowly, the true nature of the world government is revealed. We meet different kinds of pirates, some completely evil and some with hearts of gold. We see the pirate warlords who are supposed to work for the world government, terrorize kingdoms and regular citizens. The diversity of the navy's members and the different ways they think is fleshed out and the power system between all of them is established. And above all, the main conflict between Luffy and each of those factions is set up. Then, Act 2 of One Piece begins. The best thing about Act 2 of One Piece is the change it makes in storytelling. And I know, that was the second time I've said that, but turning points in stories are just that important. Without them, the story would get repetitive and boring. 
A good example of this would be My Hero Academia. And before I say this, I'm not hating on the series. I actually think it's been really good recently, especially season 6 and the manga right now. However, it did make a mistake in Act 2 by not changing its style of storytelling. I won't go into detail here, but if you want to know more, you should check out my last video. To summarize, instead of focusing on the actual plot, it kept on having character-focused arcs just like it did in Act 1, so the tension just wasn't there. One Piece, on the other hand, did the exact opposite. Yes, it did have Fishman Island, which was a little boring but important to the overall narrative, but immediately after that was the Punk Hazard arc, which literally laid out all of Act 2 for the readers. In Act 1, the Straw Hats were just going to random islands while having a loose overarching goal of finding the One Piece at the end. Act 2 gave a clear direction and goals to our main protagonist, and finally we were starting to see tangible progress towards the end of the series. Suddenly, the stakes rise a lot. If the Straw Hats lose this battle, not only does it affect the people on the island, but it also messes up the long-term plan that they have, and Luffy's goal of becoming the Pirate King is pretty much out of the window. And most importantly, the main protagonists of the show understand how important everything is. They remind each other of what's at stake, their demeanor changes, and they fear the consequences of them losing. Not only does Oda change the style of storytelling in Act 2, he also builds on the main conflict that had been brewing since Act 1 so he can set up the story for Act 3. He's set up and built hype for all the different parties that'll be involved, added depth to the mysteries he previously set up, and basically put the world in the perfect position for a giant conflict, all while keeping the reader focused on the antagonist we were currently dealing with. So, once he finished Act 2, there was a seamless transition to Act 3, where there's no boring point. So far in Act 3, we've only gotten one arc, but it's been amazing. There's a notable change in the way Oda is writing now. Instead of building up mysteries and hyping up future events like he used to, Oda is actually revealing everything he had been keeping a secret throughout the story. Characters, powers, plot lines, everything is getting explained. And it's great. We're starting to see the fruits of over two decades of storytelling. And the best part about it is how planned out it all is. The characters that are being involved in the final saga aren't just randoms that came out of nowhere. They are people that Oda has built up over the course of a thousand chapters. The themes that are being explored aren't randomly chosen, they've been fleshed out over all of the arcs in One Piece. The events that'll happen weren't decided at the last second, they've been foreshadowed and built towards over the course of the entire story. And that's the importance of narrative structure that so many stories fail at, the perfect storytelling at the perfect time. Act 1 is an introduction to the characters, the world, and the conflict. Act 2 builds on that conflict and forwards the plot, and Act 3 concludes the story by using all of the things built in the first two acts. The greatness comes in the change of storytelling after the conclusion of every act. Too many series will have a major event happen that promises a change in the story, then just not build on it at all, but not One Piece. It is a damn masterpiece when it comes to narrative structure. The density of each chapter is insane and Oda's ability to set and tie up all of the plot lines is just next level. It's not just a simple shonen manga, it's a work of art that'll go down as one of, if not the greatest of all time. The way he develops the characters, the world, and the themes throughout the series isn't the only thing that's great, it's also the technical aspect of it, how he writes the series. And if you haven't read it yet, read it now and thank me later. Thank you for watching. Anyways, if you liked the video, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe. And also, I made a Twitter account. <laughs> so if you want more content from me, you can just uh, leave a follow. I'm probably not going to post anything in depth there, but it'll be fun to, you know, get to know you guys. Anyways, thank you again for watching. Peace.